Hi, I'm Andy Parkin, Managing Director of the multi-award winning Speed Screen. I'm here today uh, to answer one of the most popular questions that we get asked, and that is shrinkage cracking and curling in floor screeds. Now, what are these and how do they occur? So they're, they're uh, an interesting phenomenon and uh, something that lots of screeds will actually experience from time to time. So if we, if we take shrinkage cracking first, any material with water in will shrink as it dries. So in a, a particularly a sand and cement screed, you'll, you will expect that to, that to dry. So as it, as it dries, it shrinks. And what you then can get is if you haven't prepared for that shrinkage, the, uh, the screed will actually crack at the weakest point. So it builds the stress up as it's, and it's actually moving and shrinking. It builds the stress up, looks for the weakest points. So generally it's probably across doorways, across the center of a room. If you've got, uh, restraints within the screed, so columns, uh, things like that, you'll generally find it takes the path of least resistance. So the weakest point, it'll, it'll crack. You, you know, you're looking at doorways, re-entrant corners, anything where the, the, the screed is going to be weakest, that's likely where it's going to effectively joint itself. So you could just put it in, leave it uh, to its own devices and it will, it will crack itself. Or alternatively, what you can do is you can try and minimize the risk of that shrinkage cracking. Uh, and also tell it where you would like it to crack. Now, to do that, what you do is, uh, generally we would always add in a sand and cement mix, we'd always add polypropylene fibers in there. So the fibers help to minimize shrinkage cracking. So it's to minimize it, it doesn't, it's, it's no guarantee that you won't get any shrinkage cracking, uh, but, it's to, but it's to minimize that. So uh, polypropylene fibers in there, and then secondly, uh, you need to really put bays uh, and stress relief joints in there. Now, stress relief joints are normally just a, a trowel cut uh, into the screed. So you're weakening the screed. So you're basically telling the screed where you want it to, it to crack. Uh, so that's as defined by the British standard. So this is standard practice. And the British standard talks about 40 square meters in a traditional sand and cement screed. Now that's assuming that there's going to be a, an aspect ratio of no more than two to one. If it's more than two to one, the more elongated it is, the smaller the uh, square meterage that uh, you will be able to use uh, in, a, in a bay. So that would be uh, shrinkage cracking. If you've got restraints, again, re-entrant corners, it reduces the, uh, the, the base size but you'd look to reduce the, the base size. So shrinkage cracks by themselves are nothing to particularly be concerned about if you have them. Uh, you may have hairline cracks, which you'd, uh, you know, you wouldn't look generally to, uh, to repair most of the time. If you've got some other shrinkage cracking, depending on what the floor coverings are, you may or may not look, uh, look to repair. And if you've got, uh, if the screed's a heated screed, again, that might just change your perspective because if you've got heated screed, that's going to be heating, uh, and cooling. So the, the screen is going to be expanding and contracting. And so if you've got a crack, that crack could be opening, closing. Uh, so that might be a, a factor in it. So if we also look at uh, curling. Now, curling is really an, uh, an interesting phenomenon. It's uh, where you'll experience uh, a curling and what they call lipping of the screed. So it generally occurs in floating construction. So if it's on acoustic or thermal insulation and what you'll get, I like to liken it to if you put a piece of bread uh, on the side in the kitchen, leave it for uh, a day or so, you'll find that it starts to curl. And that's because it's, it's drying from one side uh, and quicker than the other side. And so you start to get that, that curling process. 
And that's very much like uh, with the sand and cement, that you can possibly get curling. Now, what you can do to, to minimise this is you can actually put in either mesh across the joints. So it, it, this is where it's happening at the joints. So it, it, it could be happening at, the, at a day joint. So what you do is you put mesh either side of the, either side of the day joint and then that should minimise the risk. It's again not saying that it won't happen, but it minimises the, the possibility. You can also use uh, things like brick ties. So you can put the brick ties in, in uh, one side and then when you come the next day uh, to start the, the, the next series of screen, you can then tie in to that. And again, that will minimise, not saying that it will totally prevent, uh, but it will certainly minimise. So it's something that, that can occur if you get in that uh, different drying speeds from the surface uh, to, the, to the bottom. So that's your, your shrinkage cracking and that's your curling. Both uh, phenomenons, there are uh, ways and repairs of, uh, of, of dealing with them. So it's not something that's insurmountable if you experience either one of them. It's not uh, something that you'd rip the screen out generally and, and replace. There is uh, actions that, that certainly can, uh, can be taken. So I hope that's been of, uh, of help. If you need any further information, just please let me know and we'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you.